Hello, everyone. Thanks for checking out another podcast. Um, as you can see, Luke's got his child on him. Um, but yeah, we wanted to do a quick intro for this episode. We spoke to Richie at Fuji X Weekly and Rico Recipes. Me and Luke have been using these two apps for, for some time now. Um, we just kind of stumbled across them ourselves and then kind of reached out to Richie and um, yeah, had a chat with him. And he's a really intelligent guy. You can you know, he definitely knows his stuff when it comes to um, the recipe side of, of those those particular cameras. So you might be asking what a film recipe is. A film recipe, Luke, you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's a digital way of getting the film stock look on your digital camera. Um, yeah. And Richie has crafted the art of doing it with the Ricoh GS uh, cameras and the Fuji X Um series of cameras and yeah they're really good you know we downloaded the app and we picked out a couple of our kind of a couple of our favorite film stocks from film stocks we'd like to think we know well and gave it a fair comparison and they're great but there's 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 hundred i don't know how many on there oh maybe a hundred hundreds on the fuji one and there's probably 40 but we he launched the rico recipes app about midway through last year. The Fuji one's been around for quite a while. Yeah. And uh, he launched it with, I think, four, well, there's around 40 recipes anyway. There's so yeah. much stuff, and he's, he's so creative with how he does it. It's quite amazing. It's not something that, you know, Fuji built in purposefully that you could recreate these films. He just found by tweaking white balance and shadows and various things that you can tweak that... Um, you could recreate, yeah, Portra, Fruita, yeah. Delta, Fruita, and how, everything. And how he did the research, it's just pure time, time and effort that he's put into going out, taking photos, comparing comparing his settings, making notes of his settings, and trying to get the the closest thing you can to to that certain film stock. But yeah, it's great. You know, there's all the the you know most popular ones, you know, HP5, Portra's. And then there's unique ones on there, you know, ones that you didn't think would be, well, there's certainly film stocks on there that I didn't think would be on there. And they're great. It's been really fun to kind of test some of those recipes out and also kind of favourite some of them to know what I'll be using going forward, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, and also it's totally free to use. Yeah, totally free. And it's, um, you can pay like 20 quid a year or something and you get early access to a few things. But other than that, it's, it's totally free. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll leave a link down below to these apps. Um, so go check them out. Um, that It's also getting updated all the time. You know, he's working on this all the time, going out, trying to, like, craft his um, or hone down on the, the, the recipes, and they'll be added. You know, there's recipes being added all the time. So definitely recommend going and check them out. But, yeah, this episode, we're going to talk to Richie. And he'll tell you a little bit more about it and, um, yeah, just have a general chat, catch up and enjoy. I suppose we should tell you a little bit about Front as well. If you haven't seen already, um, we've updated the website. It's not fully launched yet, but there's a little bit more of a teaser on there when you go on there at the moment. So feel free to go and check that out. Again, there'll be a link down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the mailing list um, and you'll get notified when the website launch, uh, when the website launches, which will be soon. Um, we just, again, we know it's took longer than we wanted it to take, but we just want to make sure it's as good as it can be when we do launch. Um, we've even held back on some of the, the kind of second and third stages of the website that we'll be adding later down the line. Um, but we just want to make sure that it is as good as it can be at launch. Um, but thank you so much to everyone who's reached out and sent us messages saying they can't wait for the website to launch or, or just general support. You know, it, it, it really is, uh, you know, super motivating when we get those messages and we're so grateful for them um but yeah for now check out the podcast subscribe to the mailing list and if you do like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe drum roll please let's uh, start off in the usual way and by asking you how you got into photography well, that's a uh, that's a long story. I hope everybody's <laughs> got their seatbelts buckled and everything. They're ready. So I 
in the in the summer between high school and college, I took a road trip to uh, the New England area of the United States and a beautiful place. I borrowed my dad's Sears 35 millimeter film camera, which, uh, you know, he was gracious enough to let me use. I didn't really know how to use it, but uh, I bought a whole bunch of rolls of film, uh, exposed them all. I was so excited when I got back home and I dropped them off at the one hour photo lab. If you remember those, you know, that was, that used to be everywhere, but now it's, you can't hardly find them at all. And, but when the pictures came back, they were absolutely terrible. They were awful. They were, you know, not focused correctly. They were definitely not exposed correctly. They, they were just awful pictures. I was so disappointed. And so that, that uh, fall, when I enrolled in my freshman year in college, I took uh, photography 101 as an elective because I wanted to be able to take a decent picture. And then I just ended up falling in love with photography. So that's, uh, that's how it all started was that. That's just- it's pretty cool that you, you know, even though you got those first few roles back and it didn't put you off, it only, you know, made you more determined to, to learn. Yeah, so the you, right? I was just talking to somebody uh, a couple nights ago that had almost the exact same story, but instead of it uh, making them want to pursue photography, it did the opposite and they never learned to take a picture, but, but their story was the same where they, they borrowed their dad's camera. They, you know, loaded it with a whole bunch of roll of film. They got it developed. It was awful. But, you know, for me, it drove me to actually learn how to take a picture. And I didn't expect to, you know, fall in love with photography and, and, you know, make any sort of impact in the photography world. But I just, you know, at the time, I just wanted to learn how to actually have a decent picture. But it just, you know, I, you know, like a lot of people, once you start dabbling in it, you just fall in love with it. So was that like, did you, you continue just doing 35 mil photography for a while then? Yeah, I, I did uh, film photography. I was a digital holdout for, for a while. Uh, when I first learned photography, it was right at the cusp of when digital was starting to hit the scene. And it, and it, it definitely wasn't big. It was, it was a very small thing at the time. And then it exploded. But I remember for a long time, you could, I could tell if a picture was captured digitally or on film just by looking at it. I mean, you could just tell. Yeah. And over time that kind of changed and now it's, it's definitely a lot harder, especially with, you know, presets that people have or, or cameras like the Fujifilm or Rico. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to tell if something is actually film or actually digital, but for a long time in the early stages of digital photography, it was really tough. I mean, it was really easy to tell uh, that the, uh, the, the differences were, were huge. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. so I didn't want to get in on any of that. You know, I was yeah. like, film is better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember a friend of mine had an SLR, DSLR, and it was like two megapixel sensor mm. or something like that. And it was almost worthless. It was like impossible to use. You couldn't get a decent image. And even if when it looked kind of all right in the tiny little screen that you could see on the back no. and you'd blow it up, it was like just complete trash. What was like the first digital camera that you started using? So I got into uh, digital photography about uh, 10, 11 years ago. Mm. It was a, it was a Pentax DSLR and I don't, I don't remember the exact model number, but the reason I got into Pentax is because I had a Pentax film camera and some lenses uh, for that and they were compatible with uh, I, so I could use my film lenses on the digital camera uh, yeah yeah that makes sense and um, but it was not it was not very good mm-hmm. uh, I, I remember uh, very shortly after I got it um, and, I, and I was still learning it and everything is I, I photographed a wedding with it and the, uh, yeah the <laughs> it was not uh, like not it wasn't <laughs> no in uh, you know high ISO, I remember not of the wedding, but of uh, some other pictures. Um, accidentally leaving it on um, ISO 1600, okay. and getting and reviewing the pictures later, and just being so disappointed mm. with the results at ISO 1600. Mm. There, they were basically. I felt that the pictures are basically garbage. Mm. And of course, now ISO 1600, you don't even think twice about you know using it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. maybe this planted the seed into what was to come in the future. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I still shot 
film and digital for a number of years after I got into digital and it, and I didn't really stop. I, I still have a bunch of film cameras. I occasionally load it with film, but uh, once I started shooting with Fuji film is really when I stopped shooting film. Yeah. 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 Cause you get, I suppose if you're using like certain cameras, the X pro or the uh, X 100 and those sort of things, you get the experience almost if it, it feels like a film camera um, and then obviously the output is similar. So it's one of those oh, things yeah. I go through, like, I think me and Jamie were out last week and I had my X-Pro2 and I was like, I just don't want to shoot film anymore. I just, yeah, uh, well, we, we, we went out specifically to shoot. I can't remember what it was. It was some Delta 3200 or what, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Or we both happened to have a roll of it. And then, yeah, we both grabbed our Fujifilm digital cameras for, for some time, do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. And was loving it to the point where we didn't want to put it down to then to then shoot film. But again, thanks to your recipes, that was helping. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, thanks. So, yeah, I just, but, interestingly enough, you talked about Ilford Delta 3200 is I, I just printed uh, a picture that was captured on Delta 3200. And I mean, I was just really like shocked at, and, you know, I've used it before. I used it in the past uh, before, but just how big the grain is on that. The, yeah, the, yeah. the size of the grain is just enormous on that film. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I, I went out with my camera earlier just on a quick walk, and it has still got that roll of Delta 3200 in that I had shot about half of it. And um, so I stuck a filter, like a red filter on it. On mm-hmm. the camera. So it brings it down about three stops as well. But I, I was just doing a bit of research before I went out to say, you know, what, what's a good setting for shooting this in the day or what, what do the results look like? And it was like golf ball size. gray. (laughs) So the reason I printed it was because I had captured on a Fujifilm camera, I had captured accidentally an image that I really liked, but I accidentally captured it at um, ISO 51, 200 like the absolute yeah. highest like that iso that nobody would ever use yeah and the, and the reason for that is i have a fujifilm xe4 which doesn't have the um iso knob on the top like a lot of them do so i program the front wheel to be the iso knob basically okay. and i accidentally yeah. bumped it and and then the next thing i know i'm shooting pictures at like a super ridiculous iso completely unnecessarily yeah and the, I was the, really the why is it there ISO? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and you know, but I, I really like the picture. I I I converted I did the end camera raw processing and converted it to black and white uh, using one of the rest of film simulation recipes that is intended for really high ISO. And I printed it and I also printed the Ilford Delta 3200 image so I could compare. And and the difference is pretty staggering. The picture actually looked good like I, I would put it on the wall in in the house even um even though it was captured that high i printed it at uh, eight inch by 12 inch mm. size and um but the, yeah the ilford delta 3200 the, like like you said golf ball size grain on the thing is is insane uh the the grain the grain you know yeah, the, yeah. the faux grain that they have in the in the fujifilm cameras plus the you know, the, the digital noise that kind of has a grain like look to it a little bit is, is so much finer. I imagine that it would be more like if you were maybe using uh shooting, like maybe medium format Ilford Delta 3200 as opposed to 35 millimeter, maybe the, I, I assume the grain would actually look a lot smaller. But literally we started talking to you and then I was like, why, why are we talking? Let's just get this recorded on the podcast. But <laughs> So you're in Utah at the moment. So have you always been based in Utah or, or surrounding area? No. Uh, so uh, I guess to go back, my dad was in the Navy. We moved like every year when I was a kid. It seemed like it seemed like every year around Christmas, we moved somewhere new. Yeah. But uh, uh, about uh, five years ago, or about five and a half years ago, my wife and I moved to Utah because that's where my job sent us. Before that, we were in California. Uh, and before that, we were in Arizona. That's actually where we met and got married. Was oh, Arizona? Nice. Uh, Utah is beautiful. It's a beautiful state. Uh, you know, right out the front door, we have like a vista of the mountains and stuff. It's just absolutely incredible. What but I get Utah to see every day. Like your office does. Then yeah, then that's insane <laughs> because your office is about the size of my house. 
Yeah. yeah so this is actually <laughs> uh, we we recently moved the the office. It was uh, a couple as of a couple weeks ago. It was in this little corner uh, that was probably about the size of a coat closet, mm-hmm. and uh, it was just it was just way overcrowded. It, it it didn't it definitely didn't look good for you know any sort of like uh, videos or anything like that. So we moved it uh, to uh, the living room's kind of like split in half. So we took half the living room and basically turned it into an office. Nice, nice of that space. Yeah, it is. It is really nice. So the so the living room you can't, you know, you guys can't see it, but it's just off to the side here. So the yeah, so you've got some beautiful views out of your window at the moment. Oh yeah, it's ins- it's insane. It's stunning. Yeah. Nice. It's uh, it's so that's also you know very inspiring for photography. You just you know the sun's getting ready to set, and you just grab the camera and and yeah. stand in the front yard. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. So where, where you are then, obviously, it sounds like, you know, like a majestic place, so to speak. But we, we, we talk about this quite a lot about being motivated to go out and actually take photos, d- digital film, whatever it might be. But it's hard to get motivated sometimes mm-hmm. around your own house, do you know what I mean? Or, or in your own area. When I've been challenging myself to kind of go out and explore my you know, my back door, so to speak. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, like locally, like within walking distance. Do you find yes. that it's ever a struggle for you as well? Or, or is it, you know, yeah, not so much out there? Not here. It's not a struggle. Mm. Uh, j- just because uh, it's like, you know, a short, you know, walk will lead to like some really great opportunities or, or short drive will lead to even more. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, the photographs that I, I really like to capture aren't, local yeah yeah yeah. so like if i want to do um like urban or street photography i mean i just i don't have to go that far uh yeah salt lake city isn't that far away so i mean i could i could get in the car and drive you know 30 45 minutes and get to a place like that uh what the i really love is like abandonment type like abandoned buildings that kind of photography urban exploration and there's really not a lot of that around here yeah we, we were, were in California, it was everywhere. Yeah. We, 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 we tried to go urbexing, or, or I did, just mm-hmm. you weren't with me, to be oh, fair. Yeah. There's, mm-hmm. there's a couple of the places near us, there's like an abandoned airfield and oh, yeah. you know mm-hmm. surrounding buildings. But every time I've gone there, there's either been police there or it's been like barricaded off for whatever reason, but it's right next to an army base, so I don't know how people get in there unnoticed mm-hmm. but i'm so determined to go there because it's now on my kind of checklist of places to go you know what i mean and there's a couple of like abandoned buildings in the area petrol stations and stuff like that gas stations should i say um so yeah it's always fun because you know i always think that when you come across something like that i assume that it's already been photographed a hundred times before so it's putting your own spin on it do you know what i mean and, and yeah you know trying to show what you see that is different to everyone else um but yeah easier said than done yeah so i I got a funny story um i was doing some uh abandoned building photography in california when we lived out there and we lived out kind of by the desert and there was there were so many things abandoned military bases you know just abandoned mines all sorts of stuff there was uh, uh this abandoned house that i that i went into I was, I was in there taking pictures, uh, photographing it. And I, I'm like in the second floor and I look out the window and there's a police cruiser outside. I'm like, what's going on? So I, I go out there and sure enough, there's a police officer out there checking on me, trying to figure out what I'm doing. So I have to show him my pictures. And he's like, well, you know, most of the people that come out here are up to no good. They want to vandalize and that kind of stuff. He's like, uh, but, uh, but let me tell you about the history of this house. And he starts to explain to me the whole history of like, it would belong to this lady who founded this company and and all this stuff and, you know, all sorts of stuff about it. And then he let me just keep doing it. So that's great. That's really good. That was my, that was my one run in with the police (laughs) doing something like that. Definitely not the same police as we have around here. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I was going to be in the back of the police cruiser. I always always assume that as well. Like, like, I don't know if it's just a confidence thing or me just put like I, mm-hmm. my opinion is to always kind of play dumb. Like I'm here taking photos. Like, yeah. well, you're not allowed to be here. <laughs> okay, bye. Do you know what I mean? Like, what yeah. Can you really get in? But then I don't know. Yep. Like people can. It's like as well when you're in. So we were in a multi-story car park and um, mm-hmm. we were taking photos out of the wind, out of like 
you know, not even a window, just out of the gap for some stuff that was happening below. And they came and said, come, can't take photos in here. And it's sort of like, it's weird because you think, well, we're not taking photos. We are in here taking photos, but we're taking photos of outside. So yeah. if we were stood outside yeah. taking photos in, you couldn't do anything about it, but that would be us taking photos of the inside. Of the room. property, and yeah. Then kind of, so then I was like, all right, cool. And they're like, so you've got to leave. And I'm like, we're not taking photos now. And they're like, you need to put your camera away. And like, well, it suddenly becomes like quite a bizarre kind of when you really think about it, you're like, well, just because I'm, so I'm holding a camera, I'm not allowed to be in here now. Yeah. Uh, well, you need to, what are you doing with your phone? Because that's got a camera on it. Yeah. That, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. It's suddenly these kind of bizarre rules around like you're not allowed to take photos become very easily questioned, I would say. Oh, yeah. It's so, it's so bizarre. I was at a concert. Uh, it was uh, Asia, the band Asia, if you ever heard of them. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. uh, that big uh, any, well. <laughs> yeah so so i was at the the concert and they they said you know no cameras allowed and so i i there's a security guard and i i approach him and i say you know i i just have this camera i show him the the rico gr uh is this okay it's like oh yeah yeah so this is not professional camera that's all that matters like so so if i had you know a dslr or something they would have mm-hmm. said no maybe a fujifilm camera they would have said no but the rico is just they're like oh yeah that's that's not a professional camera i you know yeah they're they're making judgments that they have absolutely no idea about yeah yeah, yeah. It's perf- perfect isn't it like camera for that sort of thing i think i had the rico on me once another time jamie when you and i got like told off again for like taking we were like stepped over the line into a local government. oh yeah so oh, you, yeah so we actually made a video based we actually set ourselves a little challenge to take as many photos as we could in 20 minutes using the rico gr right <laughs> um and yeah we got stopped twice didn't we yeah at least i think but again yeah. that was one of those things i was like if you want to get into the, like, the technicalities of this like camera like it's got the same size sensor as a dslr and all this kind of stuff but it doesn't look uh it doesn't look threatening or it doesn't look in any way professional, like you say. But I mean, I, I, as I've said before, hate the way this camera looks. It's what put me off buying it for a long time. Yeah. And then I saw one going quite cheaply. So I was like, all right, I'll do it. I still have, hate the way it looks. I hate the way <laughs> it works. I hate the way it... Uh, I, I, and, I, and I don't really like the output from it. So I was actually about to get rid of it literally around the same weekend or the week when you announced the Rico recipes app, I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to keep this now. So maybe the camera <laughs> is interesting to me, but I was like looking about looking to put it on eBay. Um, so suddenly it's become, it's, it's an interesting thing to use now. I didn't, re- it never even occurred to me that you could change the settings and do as much with the settings as you could um i just assumed it was i just left it on positive film and that was that um, yeah there's a lot of different looks you could get out of it i mean yeah. quite uh, yeah, a few sure. yeah. and i've definitely learned a lot through that recipe app itself which we'll get <laughs> on to talk about in a moment, in a moment. but i'm um, like I've, I, I don't know i i like the look of the rico like it's it's so different which is why i kind of like it but then i think i was hooked after when i first used it if you know what i mean because I could see way past what the camera looks like, but I did the same thing as Luke. I, I was looking to sell mine to get a Fuji X100. Like uh, I, I got the Fuji X100F, but I was going to mm-hmm. sell the Rico to fund that, and I end up I've got both now. Do you know what I mean? But I <laughs> use them for different purposes. Yeah, that's what's great about them is they they do serve different purposes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. It depends on the yeah. situation where you're going to. I mean, we're not here to sell mm-hmm. the cameras. We we know the kind of the features of them, but yeah, two yeah. two different cameras, but both very powerful. Yeah. The, the, so you talked about the camera being a little bit uh, ugly. Maybe I had a uh, uh, a Sigma DP Merrill. You guys remember those? Have you ever used those? No. Yeah. I think they they have like the I'm... Foveon three layer um, sensor on them. Those were those were ugly cameras yeah, for sure. They 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 were they had a very narrow window of when they were like just amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then after that, they were just awful. If you can keep the ISO really low and and don't and don't worry too much about the the battery life, which is more along the line of a roll of film. Like you could get about as many frames off of a battery as you could get off of a roll of film. Uh, if you could put up with that and uh, and then put up with their extremely awful software that you had to use for the raw files, the JPEGs are awful. You had to use raw files. And there are so- you had to use their software to at least initially put it into a TIFF that you could then you know, put into wow. another program. If you could put up with all that, it was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. uh, when was that? That was around 10 years ago, that camera? Uh, they may have came out initially around 10 years ago. It was about uh, probably six, seven years ago that, that I was using it. Yeah, probably. it feels like a very 10 years ago kind of thing. That I remember that's when I bought my first DSLR almost 10 years ago, and it came with all this software and stuff, and you're like... Mm-hmm. With what <laughs> like coming from <laughs> film into this i was like i just take some photos and then look at them it's like but you don't really get that so much anymore i don't i don't think mm-hmm. um but yeah so like we should talk about the uh the apps both for the fuji and the the recap yeah so give, give us give us a give give someone who would know nothing about what it is a rundown of what it is and then we can deep dive into it Okay, so so what I do, and I started doing this about four years ago, was creating uh, basically JPEG settings for Fujifilm cameras. Yeah. So it, uh, you could get a certain look straight out of camera by adjusting the JPEG parameters. Um, you can shoot RAW plus JPEG or, or just JPEG or however you want to do it. But you can get a, basically a finished image out of the camera. And the reason I started doing this, I, I was a RAW shooter for a long time. And I had uh, got a Fujifilm X100F. It was actually my second Fujifilm camera. The XE1 was my first. I, I was shooting RAW plus JPEG and I went in and I edited some, some of the RAW files. And when I was done editing them and I was happy with how they looked, I compared it to the JPEG and they looked very similar. Mm. So I thought, you know, why am I spending all this time editing my pictures when I can just get it right out of the camera? I started messing more with the parameters and and creating these different settings to get these different looks that I called recipes. And I couldn't tell you why I called it recipes. <laughs> it was just something I called it, you know, four years ago. And um, and so these these film simulation recipes, as I call them, uh, I started accumulating more and more. They started getting more popular. My wife says, you know, you should have an app that would be really good for an app. And I said, well, that's great. But apps cost a lot of money. Uh, and I started researching it and, you know, putting out an app like that could, could be forty fifty thousand dollars $50,000 to, to, yeah. to hire an app developer to do that. Mm. Uh, there was a, 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 a guy named Sahan that he is an app developer and he also shoots Fujifilm cameras. And he said, he contacted me and said, I think your film simulation recipes would be great for an app. Let's partner together and get an app out. And so basically he did it uh, for uh, you know pretty good discount because he's he wanted that, to have the app for himself as well you yeah, know yeah. yeah so we we worked together and about a year ago it was uh, December first of last year the app actually launched on Apple and then a few months later we were able to get out for for Android and then um, in May I got a uh, Rico GR the uh, original Rico GR camera or not there, you know, not the original, uh, the G GRD, not the, not the film, not the GRD, but the, you know, the, the APSC mm. Rico GR. And, um, and uh, I started uh, when I got that, I started playing around with it and I started making basically, you know, same thing, you know, recipes, JPEG recipes for that camera. And then uh, I don't remember what was it August or September, I think maybe September. Um, I launched the website, I launched the app, you know, pretty simultaneously uh, for that. Uh, and, and, and I'm going to add to that as well. I'm working on the next uh, collection mm. of recipes for that right now. Yeah. So, so more so to many, come. So many already, isn't there? Like... Yeah, well, I had a question about that, but based around the amount, because what I really like about it is that it, like, it's beneficial to any level photographer do you know what i mean like 
myself and Luke, like Luke, like you probably won't like me saying this, but you are way more technically minded than me when it comes to cameras. Where I, I would just like, oh, that's that's a cool camera. Let me look into the somewhat features of that. I'd rather be hands on and kind of test it, right? Where Luke, you're like, I've researched. I know this is for my sort of thing, but still, when it comes to the recipes, me and Luke will talk to each other and be like, oh, have you tried this recipe out yet? Have you tried this recipe out yet? And we'll go out, and I think that's great. Like for me, it's it, sometimes I'm just inspired to go out and shoot for no other reason. Just I want to get out of the house for a couple of hours, right? And I will just literally go through the app and I'll just pick a random recipe and I'll stick to it. Um, or, you know, like I said, I'll save it to the camera if I like it and go back to it. But there's no way even you can remember all those recipes, right? So I'm guessing it helps you out just as much. <laughs> oh, yeah. I I use the app as much as anybody else. You know, maybe yeah, more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially like the, the, the Rico, there's, um, I forget, like 40 recipes or so yeah. on there. And uh, the, the Fujifilm one, there's like, almost 200 so yeah, that one yeah, is yeah. it it used to be um back before the app before there was even 100 recipes there was the ones that i used most commonly i could rattle off you know yeah. very easily to you but but anymore it's like well i think it could be this but i don't really remember mm. but the but yeah the app allows you to to take these uh settings with you on the go because uh the fujifilm cameras they have seven presets that you can load um, recipes on too. And, uh, the Rico cameras have six, like three that you can actually have on there. And then three waiting in the bullpen basically. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's, that's all you can program, which a lot of times that's all you need. But if you're out somewhere and you're like, well, the conditions aren't what I thought they were going to be, or I think this other settings might do better. You could just pull up the app, uh, find it, program it in, and then you're, you know, you're good to go. Right, right. Because I was going to say about that, just, well, we, me and Jamie were talking about it. I was saying it's like one of the faults of the Rico compared to the Fuji is that you can't, I didn't realize you could save anything. I've got mine set to a monochrome, I can't remember what it's called, monochrome something. And when I switch it to color, the white balance is completely wrong. Uh, yeah seemingly anything but it works really well with the black and white so i'm having to like change settings all the time so i do just tend to leave it on the the monochrome one now but i'll have to have yeah that's into- and that's another thing is the white balance always uh the new the newer fuji cameras will actually you can program the white balance the white balance shift and all that stuff into them but um the older fujis you can and the the rico you know unfortunately there's just some settings that it won't save I think it's because the manufacturers didn't really realize how people were going to be using their cameras. Yes. And uh, yes. so I, I had a question based around kind of like how you go around to get the recipe in the first place. Mm-hmm. Like, is it like, is there a research process? Do you have to physically have a hands on go with the camera itself? Because, you know, there's so many recipes, but there's also, you, you know, you, you put what cameras it, that recipe is available mm-hmm. for, right? So how, what's the process and the research behind that? So um, every recipe is a little different in how it comes about. A lot of times um, it's, uh, it's not either something I want to create or somebody, somebody suggested that maybe I should create. I look for, you know, a lot of times it's based off a of film. It's not always based off a of film. Yeah. I'll look for examples of the film. I might have it myself, which is always the most helpful. That's the most ideal is if you actually have physical copies of the film yourself to to compare it to but if you if you don't then you have to go and try and find some you know online uh in magazines and books um if you can in that kind of thing and i'll try and replicate it uh usually takes uh a lot of trial and error to even get to where it's close nowadays uh, especially with the fujifilm cameras i have done it so much times uh i can generally look at something and be like well if I do this, it should be pretty close to that. And then I can refine yeah. it from there. Uh, and a, an example of that is uh, recently somebody said, uh, can you mimic this look? It was a look of a, of a certain photographer who was using a preset of some sort. He was shooting raw and using a preset that kind of looked like superior film. Yeah. And I thought, oh, classic negative in the film. You know, Fujifilm cameras is very close to that. And I started messing with it and trying to get close well 
the the trouble is is you can't always get exact so as i was going through it uh you know i can get the blues to look right but then the greens don't or i can get the greens to look right but then the blues don't you know and stuff like that so if trying to find maybe that middle ground where it looks really close to both maybe isn't a hundred percent spot on for either Mm. uh things like that so there's a lot of trial and error once i have it where I think I got it right, then I'll go out and actually use it for a day or two, uh, take a, you know, take a whole bunch of pictures and, and see if I still like it, Yeah, you know, and sometimes I do. And then sometimes I'm like, well, if I do this little tweak, it'll look better. And so then I'll do that tweak, uh, shoot with it again. And if I like it, then it'll become a recipe. And if uh, there's for every recipe that gets published, there's probably two or three attempts that never made it. To, to anything i didn't like how it turned out i wasn't successful yeah I bet it's that's crazy I, 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 I really respect that because that I, I was trying to work out in my head how i would do it without speaking mm-hmm. to you first if you know what i mean and the only way i could imagine was go out and shoot the film stock have that as a reference then you know play around with the settings in the camera go out and test that hope that the lighting conditions are somewhat similar so yep. it's a fair comparison mm-hmm. And then if you don't like it, you've got to go back out, same conditions, do it all again. And you just said that that's kind of what you have to do. So yeah. one recipe can take you kind of unlimited time. You, you know, you might yeah. look out and get there a bit quicker, but you're always working and developing on it. Yeah, some recipes come about in a day and some are worked on over the course of months. You know, yeah. it's just... Even like various different ones on the... app. Like I know for the Fuji one, there's like quite a few different portrait. Uh, mm-hmm. recipes for example like even just mimicking the different like 400 or 800 or yeah that's a that's a really good point because like um like de- a film depending on how you shoot it how you develop it uh how you scan it all those things can make a difference to how it actually looks yeah. so two two photographers can shoot portrait and uh, portrait 400 and come out with like vastly different aesthetics from that film mm-hmm. yeah and so i have two uh, Portra 400 um, recipes for the newer cameras, uh, Portra 400 and Portra 400 V2. And they were both developed from looking at actual Portra 400 films uh, that were supplied to me by two different photographers. The, the recipes both mimic Portra 400 film, but they the one mimics more of the one guy's photographs and the one mimics more of the other guy's photographs. And it all depends on how they... They shot it, developed it, scanned it, etc. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting because I've, I've had, yeah, obviously I've noticed that there's two on there, and I did wonder what is the, what's the difference. I kind of assumed it was just there was two different versions that you created and you liked them both, um, and that would allow people to see which ones work best for them. But that's really cool that that's how that came about. But yeah, I just imagine there's so much trial and error and real frustrating. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, sometimes it's really frustrating. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know if you'd have like one wall of Fuji cameras, one wall wall of Ricos, and then whatever else you're working <laughs> on on the next wall. Because obviously, like on on the app itself as well, or app should I say? Not only does it make it very simple to kind of understand and go through, which is great, right? Like I said, it goes back to every level of photographer being able to use it, and it appeals to all of them if they want to try something different. But it also gives you the recipe and what cameras they're available on and what lenses they'll work with mm-hmm. um but again is that just through knowing the cameras inside out and going well i know that the x100f doesn't have what the x100v has oh, yeah. in that aspect yeah that that that's a big part of it i also have you know it, if you guys can see that the people listening won't be able to see it but mm-hmm. but behind me here that case is full of cameras yeah. And, uh, and they're mostly Fujifilm. There's a, there's a, a few Rico in there, but yeah. I have, I have the X-Trans one sensor. I have, uh, a, you know, X-Trans two sensor. I have, um, you know, the different sensor types I've, I've actually have experience. Mm-hmm. I have them, I have experience shooting them. And so that's how I know what they do or don't have, what they can and can't do, uh, what they look like when you shoot them because everyone's a little different like the way it renders a picture is different yeah um depending on the the sense of generation and even like there's even some like kind of off the wall kind of things where like for example the fujifilm xm1 which is a really old mm. camera that they 
they don't even make that line anymore. They only made one in it and that's it. Um, it has an X-Trans 1 sensor in it, but it has the X-Trans 2 processor in it. Oh, and it doesn't necessarily really look like exactly like either. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it does look a little more like X-Trans 1, but, it, but even it looks a little different in the way it renders pictures. So it's just, there's a lot of like variables with all that. And, and I know what they do because I have experience with it. Yeah. And I suppose it goes back, you know, loops around to going back to physically going out and trying it yourself until you find yep. something you're happy with. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's really, really good. Yeah. I, I programmed into my Fuji, which is an X Pro 2, the Sinistil recipe, which I know is mm -hmm. for the X Trans 3 yeah. sensor. So I just thought, well, I'm going to try it. How different can it be? And then went out of it and shot it and was like, yeah, it's really different. It's really good. <laughs> Luke's, de Luke's determined to like Sinistil. Uh, de I feel like you're determined to like Sinistil because for someone who goes on about how much you hate it, I feel like you use it a lot. I don't say I hate it. I just, <laughs> no. I <don't> hate it. <laughs> like, but I feel like you're determined to use it because you're like... There's, oh, yeah. I wasn't happy with these results. I wasn't happy with these results, but you still give it a go, which is good. Yeah, well, it's got... Um, you can't hate high ISO colour film because there's not that much of it. Um, mm -hmm. But you... I think it's really easy to shoot a roll of Sinistil and because you've got that in your camera, same if you've got like Portrait 400 in your camera and it's sunny, you're just going to be shooting away like these are the greatest pictures anyone has ever taken because I'm using Sinistil and there's a light there and you get them back and it's like muddy and uh, <laughs> you don't get the halation effect that you wanted. And um, it's just like a Sinistil 50D, beautiful, but it's like mm -hmm. so expensive. So yeah, I shoot that all the time. What's, yeah, I was, I was going to ask that. What's, what's, the, what's the going rate for like, I don't know, a roll of Portrait 400 where you are? Oh, uh, it's... Uh... It's got to be ten, twelve dollars a roll yeah. right now. Yeah, it's about about the same here then. Yeah. Pound conversion. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I just think like the Sinistil. I've just shot a roll of it. I'm going to see what it's like. I'm not um, confident that it's going to be great. But I've got another roll to shoot. I did say to you the other night, didn't I? These two rolls don't come out. I'm giving up on Sinistil forever. But like, <laughs> that's probably not true. But I did think just goes to the recipe, mate. Yeah, I'd like to recreate that look digitally. So the the X Trans Two, um, that I have a Cinestill recipe for that that I really like, mm. like just the way that that camera and uh, processor and stuff renders um, colors is a little different than the other ones. It's probably the X Trans Two is probably the most different of all of them. Okay. Yeah. And uh, but but that is probably my favorite Cinestill recipe is the X Trans Two one. Okay. Uh, the other problem with the Cinestill in general is that it really varies the, the results very pretty significantly, um, just depending on the lights that you're shooting them in, you know, what, what, um, you know, if it's fluorescent, if it's incandescent or whatever it is, you know, mm. the, whatever the lights are, it, the, the results, the way the film handles that is, is pretty significant is pretty wide range and uh trying to mimic all of those looks with one recipe just it it doesn't seem very possible mm. yeah um but uh, the, an interesting thing is i recently i had stumbled across some cinestill uh pictures that were captured in daylight well i say daylight but it was cl under cloudy conditions and i just absolutely love the look of it like the, just the way that those those pictures look so i tried to go out and recreate it and i was able to do it but i did it so i was making the recipe to be used on cloudy days right yeah. okay. and i and i when i developed it and was happy with the results on cloudy days i hadn't tried it in in at night and under different conditions and stuff so when i went i had no idea if it was going to do good or not and but sure enough it it did look really good at, at night even but these are for the newer this this cinestill recipe that i'm talking about is for the newer x trans four cameras the the x100 or x pro three and newer 
Well, that that will definitely go well down well in the UK because that's that's our weather, you know, muddy yeah. and cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I shot like a different. It was called Kodak Vision Three. Oh it yeah, like the the tongue. I think there's a few different ones, but there's a. I think it's an 800 tungsten film, and um, that I thought, oh, I'll try that out, and I did shoot a load of it in mm -hmm. the day, but cloudy. And it looks awesome, like real kind of weird ethereal look to it. And it doesn't have like the kind of hip coolness of Sinistil. Um, yeah. I think they've just kind of rebranded it like recently, but before like it looked really had an old, but not in a particularly cool way, like look to the film case and all of this stuff. That's a really nice one, but it doesn't give the little red glowy thing or anything like that, that yeah you know. but that's a really nice one so yeah like maybe sin is still in the day is another one to try with our mm. beautiful weather and is, is there anything that you're kind of well, obviously you know we'll shout out about the apps we'll put a link down below and we'll encourage people to kind of give it a go because you know well i'm sure we know we've spoke to people that are using the the apps themselves as well and we often we talk about film recipes that have come from yourself which is great but obviously we want to we want to promote that as much as we can and tell people to start using it but is there anything else that you're currently like working on outside of you know the rico recipes and the fuji recipes is there is it just a case that you're working towards more recipes or is there like a, other projects that you've got going on so um, obviously I'm always working towards more recipes, you know, that's, yeah. you know, that's what I love to do. I, I enjoy it so much. And, um, you know, obviously if I didn't, I wouldn't have created, yeah. uh, you know, basically 250 recipes, you know, for the different, yeah, yeah. for the two brands. But uh, uh, what I'm currently, a project that I'm currently working on and I've been working on it for a little while, but it's, it's still very much a work in progress. And I don't know, I have no idea when it's going to come out. Yeah. but I'm working on an iPhone camera app Oh wow! Um, with kind of a similar premise to, to the recipes. Uh, obviously you won't have to program anything in because it'll already be programmed in, but where you can get the results, uh, get interesting results uh, without having to edit the pictures and that kind of thing. That, the really idea cool. is you'll be able to just pull up the app, It'll already be uh, defaulted to a to a uh, filter. So when you when you pull up the camera app on there, what's uh, what's kind of you can you you can actually it just it doesn't have a filter applied, right? Yeah. But but you can apply the filters, the built-in filters, if you want to. But it's like three steps yeah. to get to it. Nobody ever does that. I mean, maybe a few people, but for the most part, nobody nobody does that. They'll they'll go in later and then they'll edit it in the maybe in the photos app or a different app of some sort rni or vseo or something like that um but the but the idea is that you won't have to go through those steps you'll be able to just get it right as soon as you open the app you'll have it right there and then you won't have to edit it and it'll save you time nice that's really good i, I think that's like that's a positive thing to be doing as well because you know as much as like you know you get your hardcore kind of just shoot analog all the time you know whatever camera it might be but purely film right then you have like the, the newer age of digital photographers and then you've got the people that just love everything which is ourselves mm -hmm. right but then uh, and to this point where I, where I do quite a lot of photography on my phone granted it's probably more kind of day-to-day -day kind of family life kind of stuff but I would definitely use that if that was something available <laughs> just because I, I always take a photo and I'll put it straight into Lightroom and I'll just mess around with it you know, I don't no. really care too much because I'm not going to really get it printed, I guess. But um, if the opportunity came up to be able to take a photo, there's a lot of photographers doing it now, right, isn't it? Like, I, I saw Joe Grit. He's posting photos that he took on his, on, on his iPhone. And it just makes you think that you can be at the top of your level. It's still a camera at the end of the day, isn't it? Yep, it's still a good tool that you can use. I, I only use mine, you know, if I'm at, like, an event or, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, maybe... Uh, uh, birthday or Christmas or you know it's just something that I want to snap a picture of you know the kids running around or whatever it is it's just convenient because you have it with you and it's in your pocket yeah. and it does decent enough you know you're not gonna you're not gonna have an art gallery of these pictures most likely and um and even, even if you did you know the quality is good enough that you, you could probably get away with it and people wouldn't necessarily notice 
Yeah, well, yeah, we, yeah. we had someone yeah. that we spoke to uh, who originally we spoke to him who was, because uh, we liked his photography, mm-hmm. and he was like, I'm not a photographer, I shoot it all on my phone. And we were like, sure, you are, you're taking photos, so you're a photographer. And then the <laughs> next time we spoke to him, it was because he had a gallery exhibition and every single photo in there was taken on his phone. And, and he still uh, claims not to be a photographer. He's had his own gallery yeah. and, and only shoots on phone. He, he is a photographer. Yeah, and I That's think he, funny. Had, he had one photo that he uh, struggled with a little bit of like digital noise that you perhaps wouldn't mm-hmm. have gotten on a bigger sensor. But otherwise, um, it was like you you wouldn't have known unless it had, you know been pointed out but really. they're here as well aren't they they're here to stay you know they're not going anywhere they're only going to develop yeah. stuff and I, I was having this argument well not even argument, i was arguing with myself i guess because my, my phone contract comes up in january and i was mm-hmm. like you, you know and you know if i just upgrade i'd probably get the newest iphone you know whatever it might be but for me like i wasn't first I, I i've got no desire to get the newest and latest model just because I don't really use the camera or I would be more than happy with an older version for what I personally use. Cause I know that I don't really do any like real photography. Like when I go out and shoot, I don't take my phone. I'll take one of my cameras, right. Um, whether it be digital or film, but then at the same time, it's, I'm arguing myself, well, surely I still want if I, the times that I do use my phone, surely I want them to be as good as possible. But I, I don't know, it's just kind of finding that balance. And obviously you've got the cost to kind of consider as well. But oh, yeah. for the majority, you know what? I don't know what the percentage of people have an iPhone, but it's got, it's, you know, over 50% of people in the world yeah. probably have an iPhone, right? Yeah, don't hold yeah. me to that quote. Yeah, that fact. <laughs> yeah and I, my, I, I don't have, you know, the latest and, and greatest. I actually had a, when I first, when the app first came out, the the Fuji X Weekly app, uh, the i the the phone I was using was actually over three years old. Uh, it was mm-hmm. over a three year old iPhone, and uh, and I was like, well, you know, if I'm developing apps now, I probably ought to get like something newer. <laughs> but even when I did, I got the 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 model year old. Not it wasn't the latest yeah, yeah. one, but the yeah. one prior. Yeah, I remember right? having you know. the iPhone eight plus, and okay, I absolutely loved it because it was mm-hmm. it was the first time iphone did like the bigger version of their phone so it was a huge screen and i, and I love that like because i could see everything i could edit on it quickly do you know what mm-hmm. i mean just like little little photos or whatever it might be i loved it and when i upgraded i can't remember what i've got now maybe the 11 i think i don't know what the yeah, new one is 13 yeah so it's the 11 and mm-hmm. I, but it, I had to. It took me a couple of months to adjust to the fact that it was now a smaller screen again. But they, I couldn't get the eight. I went in there. To, I went into the phone shop and said, "I want another iPhone eight, but they just couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but, you know, I, I think there's a lot of people. You know, photography is now bigger than ever, right? Because of the vintage esque side of it, but as mm-hmm. well as the, the the fact that you've got a really good camera in your pocket all day, every day. So I feel like the new age of digital photographers or iPhoneography age or whatever it is, no. people are going to be interested in that. Yeah. yeah, and so the whole philosophy of, of all of this stuff has been to make things easier for for people. Uh, the film simulation recipes are supposed to kind of take a step out of the process for people, and not only make it more enjoyable, but just to to speed up their time. To you know, because when you edit pictures, a lot of times you have to sit in front of a computer for hours. You know, if you can remove that, you know, just make things uh, take less time. It yeah. frees people up to actually, you know, create um, their art or their pictures or whatever. You know, maybe they're not interested in art, but mm. but but to capture more pictures, to spend more time with their family, whatever it is. That's that's the whole philosophy of, of all this for Fujifilm, for Rico, and also for the uh, the iPhone app whenever that comes out. You know, maybe next time we catch up. Couple yeah. of months down the line, we'll see where you're at. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's that's really good. Do, do you have any kind of um connections within Fuji Film or within Rico themselves, or is it just a case that you're you're you know spending <laughs> you your hard earned cash? Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of a funny story. Uh, about a year and a half ago, it may not have even been that long ago, there was a different photographer. You mentioned that you know these recipes can be used by you know first time beginners. This is our first camera, absolutely is great for that. But also there's professional photographers that are using these recipes in their professional work. A lot of people might be surprised about that. 
Uh, one of these guys. For one second. Uh, I, yeah. So I actually went and did a, a wedding. Um, mm-hmm. I think at the start of this year, maybe. I can't remember when it was. And yeah, I used your recipes. And I'm not claiming to be a professional photographer at all, <laughs> but it was a great tool that I could use and quickly access to be able to do what was asked of me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was, I was shocked when uh, Ken Rockwell used uh, one of my recipes. I was, I mean, I know people have different opinions of him. Um, you know, <laughs> people either really love him or really hate him. Uh, I'm not making an opinion on, on that either way, but <laughs> I, he, he posted on his website uh, that he used, I, I had made a film simulation recipe that was supposed to, it was named after him because it yeah. was supposed to kind of mimic his, you know, what he likes the, to do what so anyways like you'll sometime later it you'll hate it that kind of recipe yeah, <laughs> yeah. and sometime later he he actually i i guess found it and and used it and posted uh that he used it on a couple of his articles no. like i was shocked about that but anyway mm-hmm. going back to uh to, to fujifilm there was one of their um a professional photographer that has quite a following um he was talking with Fuji, Fujifilm and him were having a conversation and he was talking about how he likes to shoot with the Portra 400 on his camera. And they're like, what are you talking about? You can't load film into your digital camera. I don't, they had no idea that any of these recipes were even a thing. Yeah, yeah. Like they, they had never heard of Fuji X weekly. They had never heard of recipes. They didn't know any of this stuff. They only knew that you could tweak your own settings to produce yeah. a result, but no one had actually took the time to build recipes. Yeah. And and so anyway, so he's like, oh, no, you got to check this guy out. You got to go to his website. And, and a little while later, somebody from Fujifilm reached out to me and said, yeah, we were talking with this other photographer. And he mentioned you and he said this stuff. And and and, and but that was kind of like that was kind of it. Like that was, we had a, con- we had one conversation and then there was a f- couple of emails and uh, last year they sent me a uh, mug that says uh, Fujifilm. I love Fujifilm on it. And that was, <laughs> that was kind of the extent of, of, of my uh, actual interactions with uh, the, anybody at the Fujifilm corporation until. Did you know that that, did you know that that delivery was coming? No, <laughs> because if, if I got a box that said Fujifilm on the top, oh, yeah. my name addressed to me, and I opened it and got a mug, I'd be gutted. <laughs> you know I mean? Oh, yeah. Knowing, I was, knowing what they've got. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got, I, yeah. When it when it came, I was this camera. And they're like, what's in here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, well, I was happy to get anything, you know. Yeah, I was, yeah, uh, yeah, but, sure. but yeah, um, I, it, was a, it was a surprise. But yeah. And then, um, and then uh, a few months back, someone in their uh, their, I guess, tech department. So in, in the United States, they, they do like a weekly webinar where they just talk about, you know, their cameras and stuff. And they said, Oh, we want, we do this webinar. We want you to be a uh, guest on the, on the show. So they, uh, they invited me and I said, yes. And then I didn't hear anything. And then like the day before the show, I said, am I still going to be a guest tomorrow? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and uh oh they're like oh yeah yeah definitely and uh and then the so i i i was on this was uh i guess a few weeks back i was on their oh, nice. their webinar we talked about oh, sure. film simulation recipes and stuff and the, and then that that was i haven't heard from them since either so i i have had some interactions with the fujifilm corporation but but very very little and I've never heard anybody from uh, from from Pentax uh, at all. So, <laughs> well, we we've got a, so it, randomly in Northampton where we live, we've got mm-hmm. a Rico. What well, well, I don't even know what it is. What what is there? Do you know? I don't know. It's a huge building. We've got a Rico building. We'll go and knock on the door for you and tell them you know. Funny story about that actually. When I first got my Rico GR2, I mm-hmm. actually went round the industrial estate where the Rico building is. But next to this Rico. Um, office if you like is a police station but mm-hmm. i thought it'd be quite ironic to take a photo of the rico lo- logo on my rico camera but the only way i could do it was to kind of hold the camera up and look through the the kind of hole in the fence but i yeah. actually had to lie down to take the photo and the police actually pulled up next to me and said <laughs> what are you doing because this was on like a sunday everything's closed yeah. they were like what are you doing i was like just taking photos actually and they're like 
as you are then. <laughs> like, it's really random, <laughs> you know? But yeah, so it, it, yeah, when I think of it back, it definitely looked a bit dodgy. So the iPhone app, is that is that a similar idea that you would build in film images uh, presets based on film stocks and things like that yeah that's that's i don't i don't know how close i'll because the uh um definitely the options are limited on what you can and can't do um within that uh, mm. to make adjustments but the idea yeah. is to have like, definitely some analog type looks yeah it, you know from the iphone you know straight yeah. out of the iphone yeah, that's an awesome idea. You should probably keep that to yourself because someone else will like... Somebody's going to come up and, and and grab it. <laughs> Have you ever... So there's like the disposable camera app. Have you ever tried that? We tried that recently. Well, uh, well, What's it I called? can't remember what it's called. Um, I might still have it on my phone. It, the new it, it was... I, I don't know. It was so awful. And and I didn't even yeah. get to see the pictures because you Is had this to... Is like, you can't see it for 24 hours? Yeah. Yeah, didn't, I'm sure we tried it, Luke. And you basically oh, you take a photo. Well, you have to shoot 24 or 36 photos. And then it, and it, so basically, when you finish shooting the roll, you will then be able to see all 36 or 24 photos. But for some reason, on my phone, I don't know if this was just a glitch with the app, but it developed every 24 hours. So if I didn't take a photo, it'd still develop. Or if I took, mm -hmm. say, six photos on my phone one day, it would, it would still give me them all back, you know. 24 hours later and I didn't want that I wanted to not be able to see them for 36 photos do you know what I mean um but yeah I, I don't know I, I don't know you might not have some more inside knowledge to me <laughs> yeah no I I had pretty much the same experience and 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 I I deleted the app I was like this is all yeah. I, so I'm hoping not to have something like that no, but no. um what's crazy about that app is like some investors were were getting involved I mean there was millions of dollars that were being thrown around for that app yeah, that's, really? that's 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 insane because the oh, app was wow. was is definitely not no, I very good so i'm hoping to have something that's not that's not terrible like that yeah, yeah. But if you're listening to this you know where you heard it first and also going on his track record then you know it's going to be good <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah so going going just just to kind of wrap things up i guess going back to the rico recipes and the fuji mm -hmm. recipes the fuji film recipes for someone who is who's listening to this if you are, you're awesome. Um, but if you're if you're going to download the apps, obviously we'll put a link down below. But what would you say is a good starting point? If, if you were just to throw out a couple of recipes for people to try to get used to the kind of app, what, what would you suggest? So um, obviously it depends on the camera that you have. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's say you have uh, an XT3. For example, yeah. Fujifilm X-T3, um, you know, that Kodak Vision 3250D recipe mm -hmm. is one that I, I really like. Uh, and, um, you know, I personally just really enjoy the results from that. I actually seen somebody share with me their pictures that they captured that recipe just earlier today. I was just blown away by how well it did in the snow. Like, I never tried it in the snow. That's There's interesting. Just so many. It just started snowing, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny is I'm in Utah and there's, there's like a little dusting on the, on the top of the peaks, but there's, it's no snow yet. And like, I'm seeing pictures of, from other people that they're, they're like a foot deep in snow, but, um, you know, it's, it's so much depends if you, if you have the, the, the Rico, uh, cameras, uh, you know, I, I like a lot of the, like the positive film, uh, yeah. recipes, the ones that use that, um, uh, so much depends also not only the camera you have, but also the conditions you're in. Um, some recipes do really great on sunny days, but not necessarily cloudy days. Some do great on cloudy days, but not sunny days or indoors versus outdoors, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, my best suggestion is to go on the app, have a look through, on. you see, you know, try it yourself. There's, get hands there's on. sample pictures. And if you like the way, like yeah. you see the sample pictures, you like the way that looks give that a try, you know? Yeah. 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 That's a good point. Cause I've gone on there and gone, oh, I'm going to try out like whatever it might be like an ectochrome thing. And then I've looked and noticed a different one and been like, nah, that's actually what I'm trying to go for. And cause there's so mm -hmm. much to pick from. It's like, yeah, just try, try some stuff out. I, I, I probably hand on heart, probably eight out of 10 times I go on the app. I will pick a random one because of that sample photo more than the idea of going on it and saying, I'm going to use this thing. Yeah, something I'd but like again, to implement in the future 
is to have like uh, maybe like uh, I don't know a, a pair of dice or something that you click on and you tap on and it just uh, it'll just randomly select one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe, you know, if you have whatever parameters, maybe you put in the parameter of your what camera you have and th and that kind of stuff, and then then you click the you tap the dice, and then it'll just uh, yeah, randomly cool. select one, and then and then you go use that one. You know, see what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, fun. really, you should implement this right, like a reverse image search. It'd probably be mm -hmm. impossible, but the or maybe I don't know. You could upload a photo that you've seen I and mean, been like, I want to recreate that look you could upload that to the website and it's yeah, that'd be interesting because closest recipe because like uh google lens will kind of do stuff like that like yeah like yeah. like google actually I, yeah i wonder if there is a way to implement that that'd be pretty cool yeah mm. yeah i'll take like 20 percent um yeah <laughs> like, yeah yeah that's that would that would be a good idea but I, yeah god knows how difficult but well that's but, the yeah. thing that's always like there's so much code that has to be written i don't know enough about code to do it myself so that's why i have to have somebody who knows what they're doing um partner with me on this but there's so much code that has to be written for even like so that so the fuji film app was just updated a few days ago you guys probably saw that mm. yeah. um there was so much more that we wanted to do in that update we did a lot it was there was a lot in that update but there was so much more we wanted to do but just the time it takes to put in all of that code um was just it was dragging it out so we had to to kind of cut it short of what we really wanted it to be and save some of that for the next update yeah but uh that's but that's that's yeah that's a big issue with it is that there's just so so much that has to be done and then once you do it you have to test it make sure it works right and, and it seems like whenever you do something it kind of messes with something else that you're not expecting it to and you know all that kind of stuff so you might you might get to a point where you're finally like ah okay i've done everything now and then mm -hmm. food you'll bring out a new camera yeah exactly <laughs> uh, that's it yeah it's coming out next year the uh, xh2 yeah. or whatever it is yeah 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 exactly well yeah it's honestly it's been really great to speak to you uh, i really appreciate your time as well it's been such a useful app uh, like both of them to be honest but like I think again when I got my Fuji I didn't realize you could do anything with it other than select those like 10 presets or whatever there is um, so it just it opened it out so much to like just being really creative with it but like so it's yeah it's awesome it's really nice to talk to you about it